We all know that volcanoes can cause massive destruction whenever they erupt. They can wipe out entire cities, like what happened to Pompeii in the Roman Empire or devastate entire regions, like when Mount St. Helens erupted in the United States. But if a volcano erupts with a massive enough force sometime in the future, it could destroy all human civilization. At some point, volcanoes have come close to doing precisely that. First, we need to understand something called the Volcanic Explosivity Index, a scale used to measure the eruptions of volcanoes. The scale goes from zero, being a relatively tiny eruption that is happening all over the world continuously, all the way up to an eight, which would be a mega colossal eruption with earth shattering consequences, similar to an asteroid impact that only happens about every 50,000 years on average. For reference, in regards to how mighty volcanoes can get, both the Mount Vesuvius eruption that annihilated ancient Pompeii and the Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980 would both be classified as only a level 5, cataclysmic, eruption on the scale. This is incredible because the Mount St. Helens eruption released 24 megatons, or 1,600 times the scale of the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima, which means things only get ridiculously more powerful from here. The best-known level 6 volcanic eruption was the Krakatoa Nightmare in 1883. The volcano was located on an island in Indonesia and exploded with the awe-inspiring force of 200 megatons, 13,000 times more powerful than the Hiroshima atomic bomb and four times more powerful than even the mighty Tsar Bomba, the largest nuclear weapon humanity has ever detonated. This epic explosion generated the loudest sound ever known in human history shattering sailors' eardrums that were located 64 kilometers from the blast and capable of being heard as far away as Perth, Australia. Almost the entire island of the volcano it was situated. On was completely blown apart. The blast was so powerful that it sent coral reefs dormant for centuries on the ocean floor, hurtling toward land as if they were asteroids. The explosion generated 30-meter-high tsunamis that ravaged the rest of Indonesia. Everybody on the nearby island of Sabisi was killed in the immediate aftermath. And up to 120,000 people on the islands were killed immediately after the disaster. There were reports of human skeletons on rafts that had gotten lost at sea, trying to escape, that began washing up on the east coast of Africa one entire year after the explosion. But perhaps the worst part about volcanic eruptions is the massive amount of ash that gets pumped into the atmosphere, which can block out the sunlight and cause global temperatures to drop dramatically. In the case of Krakatoa, global temperatures fell by 1.2 degrees Celsius the following year. They did not recover for another four years. The ash in the atmosphere caused weird optical effects, too, making the moon occasionally appear blue or even green. Some theorize even this famous painting depicts an accurate sky above Norway in the year following the eruption. Another deadly level 6 explosion happened precisely 100 years before this in Iceland, in which more sulfur dioxide was pumped into the Earth's atmosphere in just a few months. Then the entire industrial output of modern-day Europe combined for three years. This created a toxic gas cloud that killed 50% of all animal life in Iceland caused a famine that killed 25% of the human population on the island. The toxic cloud then moved across the sea to the rest of Europe, where 23,000 more people died in Britain alone from the poison gas. But let's get a little more crazy and move up to what a level 7 on the scale would look like. One of these such eruptions created the largest explosion ever witnessed in recorded history only two centuries ago, in 1815. Also taking place on an island in Indonesia, this explosion shot 400 million tons of ash into our atmosphere, plunging the entire planet into a year-long winter. All life on the island where the eruption took place was eradicated. A circle 600 kilometers wide from the blast was shrouded in darkness for days. And the year 1816 became known as the year without a summer because it snowed in New York and Maine in the middle of June. Quebec City got a full 30 centimeters of snow during the same month. This was undoubtedly a very devastating eruption that may have immediately killed up to 100,000 people. 
Still, it may have also caused famines worldwide due to the cold temperatures that killed crops worldwide. But 75,000 years ago, an enormous volcano may have caused humanity to come the closest that it's ever been to ultimate extinction. The Toba supervolcano, also located in Indonesia, exploded with a level 8 on our scale in these prehistoric times. It was 3,000 times more powerful than what happened at Mount St. Helens. It ejected 100 times more ash than the Tambora explosion in 1815. This was enough ash to completely bury all of Luxembourg beneath a full kilometer of this stuff or all of Argentina beneath one meter. It sent the planet into a decade-long winter where global temperatures dropped by as much as 15 degrees Celsius, and early humanity was possibly almost destroyed by it. The international human population may have dwindled to as few as 3,000 people during those hard times. But humanity managed to persevere, which leaves the interesting question of what would happen if a level 8 supervolcano exploded today. The most likely and devastating culprit would be the Yellowstone supervolcano in the United States. The entire Yellowstone National Park is hiding a volcano of gargantuan proportions right beneath visitors' feet. It has experienced three level 8 eruptions in the past 2.1 million years, with the most recent one happening 640,000 years ago. There's enough magma in the volcano system underneath the surface today to fill the entire Grand Canyon 11 times over or bury the whole Netherlands with one kilometer of molten rock. It is estimated that the volcano has about a 1 in 700,000 chance of exploding each year, which is absurdly unlikely, but what would happen if we were absurdly unlucky? Well, here's a map of what the damage would look like. Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana states would be largely buried beneath a full meter of ash, rendering them all uninhabitable. Anyone who didn't evacuate from these three states would likely be killed in the explosion's aftermath. Salt Lake City and Denver would also likely suffer significant damage and casualties. The only parts of the mainland U.S. that would escape ashfall would be southern Texas and southern Florida. This event would likely create either the most significant mass grave or the largest refugee crisis in history, as entire states where the people would have to be evacuated and probably flee east. The entire western United States would be completely devastated, and agricultural production in the country. They would be disabled. It would be the biggest disaster in history and likely throw the United States into a depression multiple times worse than the 1920 stock market crash. This in turn, would throw the entire world economy into a severe depression. The world would be tumultuous, cold, and frightening with a 10-year-long winter caused by lingering ash in the atmosphere and the resulting massive crop failures and famines. That eruption may change human civilization forever, and who knows what catastrophic change it may bring. Still, it likely wouldn't end us as a species. Life would go on in some way or another, as it always has. If you enjoyed the video you just watched, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel by clicking here. You can watch my other videos by clicking over here. I look forward to seeing you again for the following new video soon.